but maybe we don't have it here or oh you know what i'm doing it's missing so it's not the custom i have to take i have to take from the ods right that's a mistake so it is the ods customer uh now you'll see the date the customer timestamp right this is what is important for us let me go back and also change it in the history load. I don't need to take the customer name because that's my target table, guys. If you are, if one of you are awake, you should have made me realize that I'm using a wrong one. So, uh, in here even, uh, let me get. No, no, no. When I go with the, when I'm in a show, no, it always happens that I, I commit some mistake unknowingly. So, whenever you find me wrong, just let me know, guys. Because that happens quite quite sometimes. So I'm pulling everything. But the only difference I want to make is in this particular timestamp field. This one I don't need here. So I'm going to delete it. Even on the other side, I don't have a time field on my target. I don't need uh, the dimensional data to have the uh, customer time. But I can use where class. In the where class, I will say greater than or equal to sysdate. So that it is going to get only if the data is of today or greater than today. In general, uh, data warehouse will not get the most current data. So in general, what we do is we won't use the system date. In general, what you'll have to do is use the global variable and extract the rest of the data, which is from yesterday. Because Yesterday you would have ran the job at 12 o'clock and the data would have loaded of whatever is yesterday's. And today you want to run the job starting 12 a.m. and end with the 12, uh, 12 p.m. Not 12 p.m. actually. Uh, what we call 11.59 p.m. Because there is uh, 12 p.m. is afternoon, right? We wanted to extract till night, uh, night 11.59 or, or 12 o'clock exactly, which is going to be again uh, the a.m. of next day. So what we do is here we make use of global variables surely i would have defined at least uh, one or two global variables for that so it is the last extract date or last extract time because it, it is a timestamp field and you can say and the timestamp less than ampersand yes it is required because that's a global variable any global variable? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's anyhow in validation. We'll, we'll surely find it. Uh, it's a typo. So, uh, in here, we can always take the last, okay, the next extract time, actually. So, it would be like this. So, these global variables are automated and they will get the right information so that they will run and get only that particular uh, record which is valid from yesterday till today. This is anyhow, it is all depending on your requirement, guys. Generally, we use this kind of a condition for, for the transactional data, but just because he asked me, I'm trying to give an example here. For the, for the dimensional data in general, we need everything every time because there can be any changes for the history data also. They try to get everything, but few of the companies, they put a cutoff. Okay, get the last five days data and always try to reconcile. So in any case, the point now is why we use the conditional here. So if you if you now see the job is completed, the only difference is the delta has a where class based on the date, whereas the history load doesn't have anything. It just loads every everything, whatever is in the source into my stage table here, whatever I have given. So the important thing we need to notice is how would we skip one of them? How would we skip already we have put a conditional here. The conditional decides whether it is a history or not. If history load is equal to zero, it executes this one. If it is one, it executes this one. But did already we define G uh, underscore hist load? Uh, as I told you, whenever it is an acronym, always we will try to use capital letters. So I should follow it before I tell you. So I'm using that. So let us see. If we validate this job, for sure it is going to throw an validation error, but uh, let us uh, see if that is the case or not. So what it says is, 
this particular g underscore his load is equal to zero referencing undeclared variable okay and it also says referencing undeclared variable last time uh, last extract time you know wh what is the trick here when you define a new job the global variables are not universal i mean when i say not universal they are not at the project level they are at the job level so you will have to make sure that you define these global variables for every job or there the template comes into picture if you are using the template the global variables are already part of it so you don't need to worry about redefining then there could be a question why did it pop up when i am trying to define a global variable you know the designer will keep that everything in buffer but it won't imply what are the global variables available for this job you can go and say debug uh, sorry tools variables you see all this here but if you go to the next job you will not see them tools variables see it is empty because i did not use use my original template if i would have used the template it avoids the burden it avoids the uh, the creation of new global variable and my colleague is using some other global variable whereas i am using something else and people won't understand which global variable is meant for what and there is no standard definition of it so i generally suggest where to start working on a job use the template get that uh, get that or replicate it or you export into atl do whatever it is but use the template so that every one of uh, us who are the developers in the organization do the same thing but anyhow that is a best practice methodology but here currently what i am going to do is i am going to insert those global variables which are i used there that is also one of the uh, easiest way to do you can just say right click and say uh, this is the global variable you wanted to use g underscore hist underscore load and this is an integer so it's fine and we do have one more one or two more global variables so uh, i have to go here and say a dollar uh, not the dollar dollar g underscore see any global variable should start with a uh, dollar uh what is it did i commit a mistake okay here <laughs> okay uh, Ilal is the uh, one active uh, person at least. The remaining, I assume they are in half sleep. So, dollar underscore, uh, I will say next extract time stamp. And this is a, a date time field. So, I have to give it that way. And also, I need to give one more variable, which is um, last extract time span. And this is also a date and time period. And done. Now, if we are correct, if there is no spelling mistake that I made, uh, then this this job should validate now. Okay, there is one more. Referencing, okay, g underscore last exact time. It is not timestamp. <laughs> so, we are going to go back and then uh, do it. Uh, one other important thing, guys. If you try to modify it from here, it is not going to allow you. Because a global variable is at the job level, not at the data flow level. So you have to be at the job level. You have to be at this level. Only then it will allow you to modify a global variable. So now it allows you. If I say properties, I can fix it. So it was only like g underscore next extract time. And here even it is last extract time. So now we should be good if I validate it. Yes. So now if I run it, the first time I wanted to load the history so that there is no where clause in it. So I'm going to pass zero. And next time if I say one, it will skip and then it executes this one. At that time I need to give 
uh, at that time I need to give the value for global variable. So let us uh, do it. So I right click and say execute. I'm saving everything whatever I have touched so far. And in the global variables for the history load, I pass a zero. Leave the remaining blank so that we understand if it fails, let it fail. So when it runs, the condition is valid. So if you go and look at the uh, the result set in the monitor, you see it has ran only one data flow. It did not go to the second data flow. You see here DF0001 customer dim history. That is only the one it ran. So which means all the data got loaded here. If I click on this bubble, you'll see all the poll records got loaded. Now, next time when I load, I, I don't want to insert everything. I wanted to get that particular record which I inserted only today. For that, when you rerun it, the same job, because the same job is going to run every day to load your data store, right? In the global variables, the admin will make this as one. I mean, you'll have to always give some instructions. Here, this is an example I'm giving, guys. This is not the reality. In some cases, it, it is the reality, but not in all cases. So in here, he can pass a value or he can also give it from the uh, from the script file. He can initialize the global variables from there and that is the best way to do it. So I'm not going to give it here because why I say that is the best way is global variables you don't want it to hard code. You always want it to pass it through a script and that too from a table. So I always name the script as, as initialize. See, after you do all this, you'll realize that we'll have to go back and follow the template model. Uh, because the template model has everything like this. You have a script, you have the first workflow, second, third, and the end script, and the catch block, everything. So why we come up with a template finally is it makes the developer job more easy and flexible. So at the end of the story, anyhow, we are going to use the same, uh, same kind of a template which is uh, every organization specific. Not every company will have the same kind of a template, but you go with certain recommendations and they, uh, you'll have to uh, tweak a little bit about the template which I'm showing here. So in the initialize script, you can always go and say $G and then put uh, last uh, uh, extract time is equal to so and so. Like for example, I will say sysdate minus one, whereas G underscore next extract time is equal to this day. Anyhow, this job is going to fail. The reason being you'll have to get the conversion of the date only then it accepts. Currently, it won't throw you any errors because the conversion uh, of a date is at the runtime. So if I execute it now, I want to control that it goes to else class. So I make it one. This is not the history load. This is the delta load. So when I say delta, it is nothing but the difference between the history and current guys. So when I make it one, it ran. But if you see the record count is zero. Why is it zero? Because we did not, I mean, the source does not have any data from yesterday till today. <laughs> That's the reason. If you see all the current timestamp, it is showing as uh, 9.11. Uh, today it is 9.24. So if we go and make a new data insertion in this, in the ODS, I go here, I say edit table, and I'm giving dem1 and the customer classification is PR, which I mean training, and this is cloud, and uh, we don't need to fill up all the fields, guys. I don't want to waste time here. So here I can say uh, today is the date. So in general, while entering the date formats is always you'll have to make sure that you give the right format. But currently, I'm going quick and dirty as 24. I don't need to give time always. So because I want, I, I'll make it as 23, guys, because it's it all.